Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video of mine. Today we're checking out the vacuum cleaner section in the 1992 GC Petty Spring Summer Catalog. <clears throat> That's how I do these videos, try to add more content, you know, of course vacuum cleaner content to this channel. Um, plus I figured, you know, let's take a little bit of blast, you know, a bit, bit of a nostalgia back in the past, back in my childhood years. See what, va you know, what the vacuums looked like back then. And shows see the progression in technology over time. Um, so here in this first page, you see most of the selections from Hoover. There's a plus Panasonic. <clears throat> you can see the the Panasonic upright kind of looks kind of like a Rick car almost. That actually has a very similar design to the Rick car uprights. Um, not exactly sure what model Rick car off. Say off the top of my head, um, but it's definitely back. But they do share some of the earlier Rick car upgrades. Do uh, clean air upgrades do share very similar design to the Panasonic upgrades. And little fun fact: the Panasonic upgrades, this pan, like this Panasonic here in particular, I think is after Panasonic acquired the clean air design patents from Hoover. Yes, Hoover designed the first clean air upright. It was called the Dollamatic. They sold that in the 60s and the 70s. And then for some reason, they, I guess, sold those patents, sold the clean air design of the Dollamatic to Panasonic. Which led to Panasonic making vacuums using that design. So you can see this one is very similar to the Dollamatic. Which also led pretty much Hoover just making direct air machines throughout the 80s and 90s up until the point where they started actually started making the wind tunnel uprights when they, which was when clean air designs were starting to be used by Hoover again. And in case, um, in case you're wondering if there's what the difference is between Hoover Legacy and the Hoover Elites. You can see they're kind of similar. Maybe not in this particular picture because it seems Legacy is kind of close up. But, <clears throat> excuse me, Legacy and Elite were both kind of released around a similar time frame. And they're very similar to each other in a lot of ways. These same bag. I think the belts use it are similar. A lot of uh, designs between... The Legacy series and the Elite series vacuums are very similar. The only real major difference is that the, the Legacy, and I'll put out my pen here. Is that the Legacy's hose is pre-attached to that port there. Whereas the Elite's this port is right there. Now, of course, to switch for to switch the tools on the legacy, if you have a if you have a legacy or if you use a legacy, if you come across the Uber legacy, say in Goodwill, to switch it to the hose to use the hose, you would have to do is take this height adjustment, which is right here, and switch it all the way to the cleaning tools section. Which is right there. I know it's kind of blurry because of the picture quality. But it does say cleaning tools. And then you would slide that. <clears throat> you would slide the adjustment all the way to cleaning tools. And that diverts the air suction and airflow from the, from the cleaner head. From the brush roll to the hose. And so you'd be able to use the tools very easily. And it's a nice thing it has a stretch hose. That's kind of like a little premium feature, I noticed. Um, especially back in the 90s. I thought that was kind of like a neat little feature. It was like a pre seemed like a fancier feature to have a stretch hose instead of just a standard regular hose. This Elite, the Elite 2 in this picture, in this catalog, also has a stretch hose. I can tell it's a stretch hose. Now, I think this is the same model that I think um, that was featured in Mrs. Doubtfire. You ever seen if you if you ever seen Mrs. Doubtfire? It's a really good movie, really funny movie. They actually have the scene you see it in action 
uh, one of the the dad's kids using the vacuum. And they have the scene where Robin Williams' character is dancing around with it, with the the Hoover, like vacuuming with the Hoover. And it's kind of funny because he has the 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 hose for the elite is attached to the cleaning port and he's using it as an upright and it's in the upright mode. I just thought it was kind of funny. And there's the Elite 200. That's pretty much also known as the Encore. They sold the layers of the Encore series. So that's kind of like your bottom of the line Elite. Not too bad. Not not a shabby machine, but it's just like, again, like very pretty much bottom of the line. No frills. Just your basic upright. I really like the Guardsman design. I really like the fact that it's a bagless, the Dirt Cup bagless configuration. Usually you don't see that in in a vacuum sold for you know for household use. You see that in I in a commercial vac in the commercial market, like a lot of your commercial uprights, like the sanitaires, would have a dirt cup, the dirt cup bagless design. And so I thought that was pretty. I thought that was pretty cool. I that would be pretty cool to have a, you know to get a Hoover Garthman like that, especially if it has like a beta bar, brush roll. It says steel agitator with replaceable bristles. Yeah, it better have beta bars. I don't know why Hoover like eventually like did away with the whole beta bar design brush rolls on their machines. But I really like the beta bar brush rolls. I just feel like you know that extra bit of vibrational agitation really helps um, get deep down dirt out of the carpet. Here on the next page, you see some Eureka. There's the Eureka selection plus the crappy Regina. And yes, I call them crappy because they're, if you're a vacuum collector, vacuum enthusiast like me, you probably know that the Regina housekeepers did not do very well uh, sales wise in the market. People bought housekeepers, but a lot of people returned them. Probably due to some issues, you know, the Regina quality went downhill in the 90s, which ended up with Regina just get you know going right out of business. They get bought, I forget who bought them, but yeah, their design leaves a lot to be desired. But of course, they got the advantage of being the first brand to offer onboard attachments on their machines. Here in 1992, Eureka was still offering. A lot of uprights that use the F and G style design, which I really like. I'm trying to see, is that ESP? It doesn't say. The one that's the wide track upright and the ultra upright are both ESP. And I actually asked about uh, that on a group of Facebook. What you know? What made a, the ESP models different from the? Uh, than other than your standard Eureka uprights, was it because of a fan or whatever? Apparently, it's because it was a bigger motor. So, for example, this Eureka here um, was a 5.5 amp model. This one was a 5.7 amp model, and the Hot Shot was also 5.5 amps. The ones that are ESP are both 6.5 amps. So apparently, so I guess apparently the, the ESP models were the ones that have a bigger motor and higher amperage, which I guess meant to have more power, you know, more suction power to them, which I thought was pretty interesting. And it's also really interesting to see a, to see a Eureka upright have that have a wide track configuration. For a while, I used to see I've seen that a lot with sanitary machines. I've seen a bunch of sanitary uprights that have that design. Never really seen that like in residential vacuums very much. Oh, and that's the boss, the ultra boss. That's a pretty cool. That's pretty neat. I I really like the Eureka Ultras for some reason. I never tried one, never used one, but I really like the Ultras more than I do the Bravos. I mean, the Bravos seem like a bit cheaper in comparison to the Ultras. The Ultras were the Eureka Ultra uprights were very similar to. In a way, it's still a lot of the F and G uprights in that they had a fiber groomer brush roll or fiber groomer two. Um, the fan design was pretty much the same as the F and G uprights. The only big difference was is the bag was on the front instead of the rear, and so 
maybe easier to access. Now, I'm not sure if that was Eureka's answer to the Hoover Elites. I mean, if it is, or was, I'd say it's a pretty good vacuum compared to an Elite because of, because of that Viber Groomer brush roll, it would probably beat the crap out of an Elite. And then they also came, then they came out with the Bravos, trying to compete with the Elites, and I don't know, I've heard that from other vacuum enthusiasts that the Elites were better. And the next page, there's the little Hoover double duty wet dry vac and vac. My aunt Patty used to have one. I remember, like you know, spending nights, you know, getting to sleep over her house a couple times or going to the house a couple times. You see the her little um the laundry area where the washing machine, washer and dryer was in the kitchen. She always had the the little Hoover double duty hand vac on its charger. You see that a lot, so I thought it was pretty cool. And there's the little Regina hand vac, which is kind of like a Dirt Devil knockoff. There's the Eureka hand vac, which, let's see what that one's called. Step Saver, it's called. And the Regina model is called the Dirt Magnet. The bag on that seems really small, though. The Eureka is, is a bagless model, so that's, so that's pretty cool. Kind of interesting. It also has that riser visor feature so you can clean vertically, clean uh, vertical surfaces of upholstery and your stairs. Dirt Magnet came with tools, kind of similar to what Dirt Devil Hand Vac offered. Though, though between the Dirt Magnet and the Dirt Devil Hand Vac Model 103, I would pick the Dirt Devil. I felt like this was a better model. And then you see there's two different Hoovers, the Futura and the Tempo. Looks like the Futura is a full-size canister, whereas the Tempo is kind of like sort of a compact canister. Kind of way similar to like a Eureka Mighty Might. Um, I would guess the Futura, I guess, was made for homes with mostly bare floors. Um, because honestly, I don't think you'd buy a, a Futura canister that has a straight suction head for wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. I mean, really. I think you probably would use that if you had mostly bare floors and maybe really light area rugs that can't handle an agitator. But yeah. That'd be something... That's what I would have bought, like, you know, if I had just bare floors. You know, I'd just use that, you know. Be a lot more convenient. It's a, be a full-size machine, but you, can also, you, know, you wouldn't have to worry about, you know... A broom and dustpan to sweep your bare floors. Just get a straight suction canister and take that all care of it easily. And the next page, you see the canisters with power heads. Uh, let's see what that Hoover is called. Hoover Spectrum. I like that power head design. Is is that the Quadruplex? Hmm. Doesn't say. But it's kind of interesting if it had a quadru uh, quadruplex brush hole. That's something they should have kept going. I know they had concept ones and twos with quadruplex. They should have kept that going. There's Eureka Rally with the powerhead used on the Eureka Express. I like that design. It, it I like that powerhead design. It kind of looks nice. It looks sleek. You see that on Ox the Eureka Oxygen Canisters, the really earlier models, they had that same kind of head. Uh, what's Eureka H? That's also a rally. So apparently, I guess the difference between the Eureka Rally is listed as G and the Eureka Rally H is rep uh, here is apparently the the rally with the express power head style head that's 5 peak horsepower and the other rally is 4 peak horsepower and again ho peak horsepower is just like that rating system that vacuum manufacturers tried to use to make a vacuum seem really powerful I don't know why cuz it really doesn't mean doesn't mean jack it doesn't, just because it says like 5 peak horsepower, 4 peak horsepower does not mean that vacuum is running 
at five horses or four horses. They don't work that way. Most time they're running definitely less than five, four or five horses. The only time you where horsepower would be a factor is if you're is if you're looking for you know working with like a lawnmower, tractor, rototiller, you know anything like outdoor power equipment. Then horsepower comes into play, but not really vacuum cleaners. And there's a Futura with a power head. Great for carpets, you know, wall to wall carpeting, air rugs, air floors, stuff like that. Another Futura. That's the lower end Futura with no head, with no headlight. There's the Eureka Floor Show. Floor Show is kind of unique because it's basically a Mighty Might with a power nozzle. And I never ca have not come across a, a Eureka Floor Show canister yet. <clears throat> Though that would be really perfect if you had like really small areas, like if you had a smaller living space or like an upstairs vac, RV, dorm room, something like that. Not sure how I would. I haven't. I don't think I've seen any YouTube videos on it yet, but I have to look. That'd be really interesting to see how well it performs. There's another Hoover Elite too, and another straight suction canister, also a Futura, with the meaningless peak horsepower rating. What's also interesting, this is a, though it was really interesting when I first saw it, was that the, that this Elite has a square style head. I used to think that the square style heads didn't come out until like the mid, late 90s, but I guess apparently it had the square style elite head, you know, head cleaner heads in the early nineties. So that's like the big difference between this one and the Mrs. Doubtfire model. And there's a the classic. You got a classic shampoos. This the classic Hoover shampoo polisher. And there's the one called the Scrub and Back, which is very similar, except it can actually also. Extract water off, suck up water off the bare floor. Kind of like a Hoover Floor Mate back then. Sounds like the closest thing to Hoover Floor Mate before they had a Floor Mate. And I guess that'd be cool if, you, you know, interesting to have something to clean your bare floors with. At least you wouldn't have to worry about using a mop and bucket. Well, that's Eureka Wet Dry. First I thought that was Abyssal, but nope, that's a Eureka Shop Vac. Stick Facts. Not much to say about them. They they all look pretty similar to each other. The Super Broom, the Eureka Super Broom, and this uh, this one is is kind of interesting because they pretty much take design. Oh, there's two of them. Both of them are Super Brooms. Oh, okay. They're both Hoover quick uh, quick broom knockoffs. Yeah, I used to have something like a quick broom as a runabout. Stick vac, and I did a video on it years, years ago when I had one. It was a nice little stick vac. It was a direct air stick vac, but it worked pretty well. Wish I still had it. It would have been nice. And then there's a classic dependable Bissell carpet sweeper. Great for carpets and bare floors. There's a classic Phantom vacuum, the original Phantom. Along with the Nova Dry, that's a carpet clean. That's a dry carpet shampooer. That Phantom or Iona's back then was still called had sold. They actually started selling that like in the late eighties, like around eighty nine. I first saw it in the catalog, so I was looking through the Phantom vacuum. I think was introduced. I think I think nineteen ninety one. I think it was when they first started selling the Phantoms. What's kind of interesting is that this this is an earlier model Phantom. You can tell it's an earlier model because of the white handle grip, white bumper, white hose, white wand, and it's a 9 amp model. The later ones, like the ones I've seen in the infomercial for this for the original Phantom vacuum was an 11 amp machine. And then when it rebranded to Thunder, they gave it a 12 amp motor. 
but yeah, this is very similar. What's also notable is this, you can tell this is a really early model because it has no HEP filter on it. They didn't offer HEP filters on it on it until later on. Probably in the, inf in the commercials they start offering HEP filters. I guess it was was a first and optional accessory, but then they made HEP filters standard to I guess to help improve the exhaust emissions, especially for people with allergies or asthma. And there's another little Dirt Devil handbag knockoff from Iona. Same people who make the Phantom. This one called the Dirt Raider. And it also came with capture spot and silver remover, apparently. Again, nothing really, you know, I can't really say much about it. Yeah, you know, other than that, it's pretty much very similar to the Dirt Devil handbag. I thought it was kind of interesting. It's like, oh, that's some, you know. I didn't know that Iona made something other than Phantoms when they came to back clears. They made a little handbag that uses a bag. That, that's funny. And about the this machine called the Nova Dry. I think that was an Iona brand. Yeah, it says Iona. They called it a Nova Dry, and then I think later called it the Capture or Phantom Capture, as it was later called. This is pretty unique. Um, compared to most carpet shampoos, because most carpet shampoos are usually sold today are hot water extraction types, where you spray down the water, scrub it, and then extract the water. This one used dry carpet cleaner, in this case Capture, which is basically little sponges, kind of like Dyson Zorb, um, like you see with Dyson vacuums have something similar, just called Zorb. So you do is. You load the hopper up with the, with the dry carpet sham cleaner. It was it could dis, it would dispense. They got three different settings: one to dispense the powder, the dry carpet cleaner, and then a setting that turns on the brush to scrub it in. You let it sit for a while, and then once it, after a certain amount of time, you'd go and vacuum it up with the Nova Dry. Or Phantom, if you had a Phantom, they also work the same way too. But you probably have to find some way to scrub it in. Probably take the bed off. Um, interesting little disclaimer. I love this little disclaimer here. Not for use as a vac. Not intended for use as a vacuum cleaner. I'm not sure if anyone ever tried to use it as a vacuum cleaner. Probably wouldn't work too well because the brush hole is different. And plus it's actually a direct, and plus this is also a direct air machine. It's actually funny, it's a direct air machine but it's dual cyclonic. I'm not sure how that worked. The Phantom Vacuum, however, was a clean air design. But it's kind of interesting to see how a direct air dual cyclonic vacuum worked. And then there's the Bissell Regina selection. These are the hot water extractor machines like I was referring to. The re classic Regina steamer carpet cleaner design. That looks like something you would you would pick up, set on the carpet, and then pull back. Kind of like a rug doctor. And that seemed kind of bulky. I can see that, that, that being kind of bulky and especially, you know, really tough to work with in the tighter spaces. Bissell... Those are your, were your classic. Yeah, there's the Power Steamer Deluxe and Magic Steamer Plus. No, they don't make steam. They just squirt hot water on the carpet. And then suck it out. And yes, these were the ones that used hot water hook. Use the hot water hookup. You connect to the sink. Instead of being self-contained. Like this model. And like the Regina Steamer. Anything else on this page? Nope. Well, that was it. Sorry this took so long. I like talking about these models, these factors from the past. And so, I'm going to check out the next catalog. I'll do another video on that. Hopefully enjoy what you see. Please feel free to rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time.